Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the Yarn Dungeon. Cheers with a pumpkin spice latte. That is going to be my official latte of this month since it is halfway to Halloween. I feel like this is when I get into crunch mode. I need to know my decor. What am I doing for this year? What's my setup? I feel like we're running out of time already. So I thought today would be kind of a chill hangout. It's the beginning of the month. Also, it is April Fool's Day, which I love this day because there are so many yarn puns out there. Introducing Hobie Containers. Great news for all who need extra storage for your yarn. I knew this was an April Fool's, right? But like, who wouldn't love that? In my head, I imagined that there's shelving in here too, so it can be like nice and color coordinated. Oh my gosh, I love it. And then the best part is you gotta scroll through the comments too. Hobie container comes in two sizes. Okay, a 10 footer for those who dream of a little extra room and a 20 footer for anyone dreaming of a brand new hobby room with enough space for all of your yarn activities. That would it'd be an extra portion of my house. If you've seen more yarn puns, please let me know. Like, like, I'm so here for all the yarn puns and I don't want to miss any of them. You have a brand new Haunted Audible book that we're going to be reading and this one I tried really hard to be Halloween personified in an Audible book. I really wanted some spooky but I wanted some camp too and for whatever reason apparently the author Jeff Strand does that because all three options were from this author. And if you've never voted for this before, in the community tab, there was a poll that ran and there was also one on my Insta too. This one won on both platforms, so we were all just really excited about it. The Haunted Forest Tour. From this cover, it seems super campy, like immediately. The genres for it, horror, fantasy, fiction, Halloween, monsters, paranormal, and humor. So I have high hopes for this one. Almost a four star rating, 3.82. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Haunted Forest Tour. Sit back and enjoy a smooth ride in air conditioned comfort as your heavily armored tram takes you through it. Nature's most astonishing creation. The forest is packed to capacity with dangerous and terrifying creatures of all shapes and sizes and hunger levels. And you'll get to observe these wonders in complete safety. That's a really good Good setup. Enjoy the potential that this book has. Like, let me know what you think. I'm excited for it though. It officially starts today. So we're starting to read it today in any way that you want. You can rent the book. I get it from Audibles just because I like to have something on while I'm crocheting throughout the month. But any platform that you want to go ahead and listen to it, go for it. We do have a live at the end of the month, which is April 26th, a Wednesday. We'll come back to the Yarn Dungeon, chit chat about it, likes, dislikes, and then rank it from one to five bats. If you are in need of a pattern or a project to work up while you listen to this book, like your queue is empty, you have nothing planned for this month, do not know that that has ever happened to me. Like, I don't think I've ever had a clean queue. From month to month, absolutely not. And then year to year, that that's just not me. That's never happened. But it could be that you, you could be in that exact situation and have nothing to do and and you just kind of like looking for a new project. Well, I have a Tunisian crochet along going for this entire month, which starts April 5th, like officially. There's gonna be a live that like that kicks off the start of the pattern. The tutorial, however, is already out, the PDF too. So if you wanna check it out and see if it's something that you're interested in, everything is out there for you, the materials, everything like that. What we're making is a cozy blanket inspired by the pumpkin spice latte, which is why I will be drinking that for the entire month of April. This is a very beginner friendly type of project and it's designed to get you into the world of Tunisian crochet without overwhelming you because this is a one stitch repeat. This whole thing, just one stitch repeat. So after you have the stitch down, which trust me, it does not take long at all to get the hang of it. You can power through it, listen to the book. You'll probably end up throwing on like, I don't know, like movies or something too. It's a big blanket. It's designed to be giant and cozy. And we're ignoring the fact that I still have some ends to weave in. I thought I got them all. Fine, I'll just weave them in as I'm using it because yes, I have been using this already. It's a really easy laid back pattern. You could do it at the end of the night. That's what I have been doing. And Anyways, just to wind down for the day and since it is just a one stitch, you don't have to think about a pattern really. 
you just get the stitches on and start going. I would love if you joined. Like I said, it starts April 5th. There are a couple of different lives, so you have plenty of opportunities. If you have questions about the pattern, jump into one of the lives, come chit chat with me and the rest of the ghoul squad because there's many other ghouls that I know are doing it already. We're like really excited about it because the whole goal, apart from getting into Tunisian crochet, is to have this cozy snuggly blanket ready to go for October. So like all your fun activities that you do, pumpkin picking, apple picking, like all of the stuff, you're gonna have this blanket ready to go and it's one less thing to do in October. Renate Forever Fleece is the yarn that I'm using and I've already started my second blanket. So I will be working it along with you uh, during the live. So that way, well here, I'll show you what I have started right now. I don't drop it. Like this is what I did last night. I was watching the movie Unheard on Shudder. Got going pretty good. And then obviously once I got to here, I got a little bit distracted and like really into the movie. Take a look at the tutorial, see if it's something that you're interested in. Especially Tunisian crochet. It's just so underrated. It's such a cool texture that it creates and there's just there's just not a lot of patterns out there people don't chat about it a lot I feel like it's getting better like we have amazing humans out there like Tony Lipsy that are pushing it out into the world and like hey look at this it's fantastic you want to do this which speaking of that if you don't have this book grab it I don't even need to say anything more just grab it the best thing that I can say about this book is that it's written in a way that's designed for beginners some Tunisian crochet books that are out there that actually say Tunisian crochet for beginners they're a little bit clunky but this one is just it's beautiful it really is and it's so valuable apart from the fact that there are so many patterns in here look at that freaking beautiful. There is a blanket in here. I've made this blanket five times and I've gifted it away every single time because it's so, so nice that I'm like, okay, next one is going to be for me. Promise. Next one that I make is going to be for me and I keep gifting it away. It just needs to be shared. Everyone needs a Tunisian crochet blanket. That's just how I feel. Anyways, that's my rant on this book. If you've been hanging out with me, you've heard me talk about this many, many times. And you probably already have this in your collection, but I just figured I'd shout it out again in case you're just joining for this very first Tunisian crochet along of mine. I do have a couple of suggestions for Tunisian crochet hooks. So I have been trying different Tunisian crochet hooks, different types of brands, different types of material, wood, plastic. I have three options for you. So let's start with the most affordable one. This one you can find off of Amazon and it is a pack of 12 Tunisian crochet hooks. The cord that they come with are specifically for throws and blankets. I think it says Afghans on it, actually. There is a 10 and a 12 millimeter Tunisian crochet hooks, which when you start looking into hooks, you're gonna be like, those are really hard to find. And they are, and I don't really know why. Very light, again, it's plastic. And the cord is permanent. All three of these that I'm gonna chit chat about, there is something that I don't like about each of them and there is something that I absolutely love about every single one of them. So I haven't found the one that is like my all-time favorite go-to Tunisian crochet hook set yet, but all three of these work and I do use these for everything. Since it's plastic, it does have this little lip right here, a little bit of excess plastic which rubs really harshly on your finger you have a little bit of extra fine sandpaper just go through that there and also on the inside where the the tip of the hook do that as well just to like be over cautious so that it doesn't get caught on your yarn I love the long cord. It's perfect for blankets and it has a nice big stopper on the end. Basically what is holding your entire project from just sliding right off. It comes with a bunch of other stuff too. So if you're looking for notions and accessories, we have this pair of scissors. They're ones that they're like travel. So it covers that part up so you can throw it into a tote. A bunch of yarn needles, big chunky ones, which also work really well on my Addy knitting machine, a whole bag of stitch markers, and a tape measure. I was actually looking for one last night. I have like a little sheepy one. I was looking for it and have no idea where it's at. It's probably in a tote for one of my projects that I have going, but so like, you know, it's always nice to have extra accessories if you can, or if you're like me and you have multiple projects going on at any given moment. 
So that's the first one. Have Knitter's Pride. This one comes in an entire set with the cords and also the stoppers and a little, what is it called? It's like a, like a metal piece, a key. Yeah, four cord keys. I guess that's all it is. I thought there was some fancy name for it. That is the one that I just showed you that I'm using right now. However, this set only goes up to an eight millimeter. Everything else you have to buy individually, but the cord is interchangeable. If you have the pack of, what does it start at? I don't remember, like really thin. I've never used the tiny ones, to be honest. 3.5 millimeter. Wow, yeah, that is really tiny. I like Tunisian crochet with extra bulky yarn just because, I mean, I make blankets from it. That's mainly what I do. Even my cardigans that I've made though, I've used a 6.5 and up. So I've never used the really thin ones. Someday I might. This is a really good set because you already have all the cords. There's a bunch of different sizing all the way up to 31 millimeters, which is what I'm using for the blanket. This 10 millimeter one, I love this hook. If I could have this hook with a different cord, this would be my go-to hook. It's just really smooth. I love the color. I love the tip of it. It grabs the yarn really, really well. You don't have to sand it. It is just like, it's ready to go. Especially with the pumpkin spice latte colors. And then we have the green. We got a pumpkin action going on for the entire blanket. But yeah, you can see right here, this part twists off. Just gonna pull it off anyways. I didn't use the key last night to tighten it up. So it's like super, super loose. It's not supposed to be that loose. Once you get your project on there, make sure you do use the key on this to twist it up. Otherwise the cord will fall off in the middle of your project. The stitches will just fall right off of the cord. It can be fixed, but it is, it's not a fun time. Okay, so this is the end caps which is even bigger. Well here, I already have it attached, but it's even bigger than the other one that I just showed you. So the bigger the end cap, I've been really, really liking these. Here is the key to tighten it. It's just a little piece of metal. I have seen people that don't have one of these. They have just used a paper clip. Just open up the paper clip and stick it through there. And then you hold onto this part, twist the top, and that way you can have a little bit of extra leverage to make sure it's as tight as possible on here. Cause again, we don't want this slipping. You wanna over tighten it, but make sure that it doesn't like easily come untwisted. Like you can't just untwist it like this now, then you're good. It is made from bamboo. I saved the actual cover. I thought I didn't, but anyways, get the whole kit. That way you have the cord. You can buy everything individually, but if you feel like you're gonna like Tunisian crochet or you already know that you like Tunisian crochet, I would suggest investing in a set. So that way you have all of them and the interchangeable obviously is better than the ones that are permanent on it because you can build on it to your set, get bigger, get smaller hooks, get the, get the size that you need and you already have the cords and everything all set up and ready to go. The last one that I love is the Chiago set. Comes in a really nice container, especially for like traveling. Has a nice little zipper, which has all the cords in it. I think there is, oh yeah, there is a sizing chart in here too. So in case the numbers rub off or you have a hook that you have no idea what size it is, you can go ahead and figure it out there. This one goes from 3.5 five all the way up to 10 which is perfect because this project that we're working on for the blanket requires a 10 millimeter Tunisian crochet hook I'm not like super thrilled with the hook like it's a bamboo one I like the knitter's pride a little bit better the cord on this I'm obsessed with because it holds no memory just to kind of compare this one is super coily it's however you store it it's gonna remember that and it's gonna be that way when you pull it out to work with it. This one does not, however. It's straight all the time. It doesn't have any sort of memory. You can crumple it up and shove it into the front area here, pull it back out whenever you're ready months afterwards and it's gonna just uncoil very, very easily. The bottom part or the end cap, I'm not a super fan of because I find that my stitches fall off every once in a while. Like if they're not super tight on here, which my tension is naturally very loose, they fall right off of this. There has been a couple of times that they've dropped and I haven't noticed it until a few rows, like I've gone past. So I had to like go back and fix them. Not the end of the world, but just kind of annoying. Love that there's 
more sizes available in this kit. So from that standpoint, I will continue to use these. They're all fantastic options. It just depends on where you're at in your Tunisian crochet journey and like which one makes more sense to you. I do have one more set that's coming to try out that has even bigger sizes. It's like a 25 millimeter hook, I think. It's not gonna be here till tomorrow. So I'll show it when it like actually comes in. The thing with this one is that the cord was really, really small. So not it wasn't gonna function for this blanket you know if you're gonna do some granny square blankets it could totally work anyways it goes all the way up yeah there's a lot of different sizes again it's plastic so I don't know if I'm gonna like that or not Let's see what's the smallest number 3.75 up to a 25 millimeter crochet hook because there's some yarn that I'm like oh this would be a perfect Tunisian crochet blanket but I only have up to a 10 like that's the only size that I have right now I have the 12 coming for the knitter's pride but I wanted a 25 because I was like ah oh, they would just be so perfect this yarn let me show you this chunky stuff the Bernate plush big would be so fantastic as a Tunisian crochet blanket. It does say a 25 millimeter crochet hook. And normally with Tunisian crochet, you like to bump up the size of the hook. Like whatever it says on here, bump it up at least one size. However, this stuff squishes down quite a bit. So I think it'll be fine. I don't know. Again, I'm just like trying things out. Okay, so I hope that helps a little bit. Uh, we will definitely be chit-chatting a lot more about Tunisian crochet to come, especially since we have this entire blanket to make for the month. If you wanna use this yarn, this exact yarn, to make this exact blanket, that's fantastic. However, I know it's not available everywhere, so just look for a super bulky number six to make the size of the blanket that I have here. Otherwise, using any type of yarn that you have around is gonna be perfect. If you wanna use this as a stash buster type of project, the way to go about that, so if you have like worsted weight, a ton of worsted weight, which is what I have laying around all the time, you could go ahead and hold two strands together and then use a 10 millimeter, or you could just use the worsted weight and bump it up to a six millimeter, in which case you'll go by the dimensions you won't go by the stitch count. So again, that's all in my tutorial, so you can check that all out. But just follow the dimension if you're gonna change up the size of the yarn. Yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there. Like, you don't have to use this exact yarn. I'm just really excited about it. Use whatever yarn you have or whatever yarn you're looking for. I know that there's a bunch of sales going on, like especially Joanne Fabrics, they have a ton of sales. I saw their Big Twist yarn was on sale for $2.99, plus if you do an order pickup, it's another 20% off. I do love the Big Twist yarn too. Basically just use whatever yarn you have. I will also link the book down here if you're new and you want to get started and get hyped because like this book does hype you up for Tunisian crochet. Like it makes you want to make more patterns as a beginner and also someone who has been doing Tunisian crochet for a long time. It's a permanent part of my collection. Also, if you have a Goodreads, join the Ghoul Squad. Come be friends with me over there. I have a couple of different bookshelves including April's book club. I didn't really name it anything fun. It's just April's book clubs, but you know, you know exactly what you're getting into. So there we go. I also have the Darcy Coates Club. I love a book by Darcy Coates. A good haunting book, that's what it is. Some of my favorites. And then the Haunted Audible Book Club as a whole. So every book that we've listened to, you can click on that, kind of scroll through. If this is like your first month joining, you can see some of the previous ones if you're interested. And we have a ton of ghouls over there too that offer up suggestions. Follow some other ghouls, see what everybody else is reading. The book that we're reading this month was actually a suggestion to me from a ghoul. So I appreciate that. You have suggestions, send them my way. I love looking through that. Five other ones in the April Book Club. The Haunted Forest Tour, that's the one we're gonna be reading together. There is Clowns vs. Spiders. I have already started that one today, so I have two books going already. It just seems super campy, super like low budget sci-fi type of movie in an audible book form. Like, yeah, that's exactly what I want. Then there is The Cursed Among Us. I'm not sure if I'm gonna read that one, but it looked interesting. The Exorcist House, again, I will probably read it if I have time. If not, it might get bumped to like another month. Lastly, Sick House. This is about a house that needs a little TLC. A family moves in, weird stuff starts happening. So again, a nice like little haunting. Horror, paranormal, and humor. That's the first three genres that it is. So another book that I have high hopes for, just from the picture, right? 
So that is officially it. Thank you for hanging out with me. I seriously hope that you join the Tunisian crochet along pattern. I know that I've said that a million times. I'm just really, really excited about this pattern and also just halfway to Halloween. Like let's celebrate by making a cozy blanket. If you have any questions about Tunisian crochet hooks or the stitch or anything like that, feel free to drop it in the comments as well as join the lives too. My blog is linked down below. That has the dates of all three lives. If you can make one fantastic otherwise there will always be the replay you can go through that drop a comment there too and I will do my absolute best to help you in this amazing journey of Tunisian crochet so I'm gonna let you go cheers with just fluff that's all that is left thank you for hanging out with me have a fantastically spooky rest of your day and I will see you in my next video